Huh? What? 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 <laughs> what? Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me? Okay. We're gonna get to all that. Yo, what's up? Welcome to SmackDown Live review. Well, SmackDown minus the live. Because tonight's show was taped in Glasgow, Scotland, Lana. Not a part of the states. Fucking idiot. Anyways, November 8th, 2016. Bruh. Tonight's show felt good. I didn't, wanna, I didn't complain. I actually enjoyed what was on my TV. Or my computer screen. And... Fuck it, you know, SmackDown was was good tonight, you know. Kept building up Survivor Series, you know, they didn't really build up TLC that much tonight, but still, you know, they mentioned that they're having that championship match at TLC between AJ and Dean Ambrose, but all that stuff, let's just get into the show, all right, I'm gonna go on to uh, Russell's own I'm gonna forget everything, all right. Okay, so we start the show with AJ Styles in the ring, that's when I got to the live stream watching SmackDown. Um you know, fucking AJ Styles in the ring talking about he has to defend his title against Dean Ambrose, even though Dean Ambrose doesn't deserve a title shot at TLC, which is two weeks after Survivor Series on December fourth. Right? And then then he mentions about Survivor Series and talks about, you know, Raw and you know, talking about that he wants to beat up, you know, Raw superstars and stuff. And then go to Survivor Series and get the win for SmackDown. And AJ Styles calls out every SmackDown team member, right? Baron Corbin comes out first. He comes out. AJ Styles is like, whoa, man. I was going to call you out, but, you know, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you get the job done. Baron Corbin interrupts him saying, look, man, I'll get the job done. Not for you, not for SmackDown, not for the team, and that's it. And then the whole Wyatt Family graphic come up, and then black screen for four seconds, Wyatt Family uh, graphic come up again, and then it's Randy Orton, Randy Orton with Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper, all standing like how the Wyatt Family normally would when they do that. And then they come in the ring, they didn't even say a word. They didn't even say a word. And then Dean Ambrose comes through. He goes down to the ring. But then he backs track and he goes right back up to the stage. And I'm like, why is he going back up to the stage? He brings out James freaking Ellsworth. They come down. And then H.G. Styles is like, what the hell are you doing? Why is he here? I don't care what he's doing. He's not on the team. Get him out of my ring. And Dean Ambrose is like, look, man, if you got a problem with James Ellsworth, then you got a problem with me. And then here comes the money. Shane McMahon music come through, and then he comes out. And then Shane McMahon's like, you know what? Let me ask y'all a question, all right? Do you want to beat Raw? Do you want to be the very best in this business? Or or Triple H, how he would say, business. Uh, hmm? Hmm? I, I think so. So... You know, Shane McMahon trying to put everything together, trying to calm things down, trying not to build tension while everyone's in the ring. You know, oh, and uh, AJ Styles wanted, Bear, wanted a team member to beat up uh, James Ellsworth, but Baron Corbin left. He's like, nope, fuck that. I'm not, I'm not doing this shit. Nope, this ain't my doing. Hell no, right? And then after, you know, Shane McMahon announced that there would be a six-man tag team match. I believe it was, yeah, it was a six-man tag team match. It was it was supposed to be Baron Corbin, Dean Ambrose, and the mascot of SmackDown Live's team at Survivor Series, James Ellsworth, versus the new wife family version, uh, what, version three, version four, in Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper. Okay, I'm like, okay. That is, that's something different, you know. All I kept saying in that entire uh, segment when Shane McMahon came out was, don't repeat Raw. Do not do what Raw did last night. I beg of you. And guess what? It didn't happen. I'm like, thank God. 
<sighs> we got a six-man tag for a main event. That makes sense a little bit. So we come back uh, from commercial break, and we had a, I believe we had a tag team match. It was a tag team match. It was Brizongo versus the VOD Villains, right? Breezango versus the VOD Villains. The winner will be in the will be the final team to join uh, SmackDown Live's tag team at Survivor Series. And the VOD Villains lost within four to five minutes, and I'm like, holy shit! But the the I don't know what the fuck was that? The fucking TV. I'm trying to watch the fucking uh, you know the stupid election, but I can't find one good channel on this stinking box I have to watch it. But anyways, uh, yeah. You know, Brizongo beat them within five minutes, and it, it felt short. It looked a little bit sloppy. Tyler Breeze looked fucked up. Like, his stomach looked like it really hurt, or he just selling it well. I don't know. But regardless, um, Brizongo is the final team, and that's it. And the funniest part, before their match even started, JBL got a ticket for being, quote, an uggo. Now, I think, personally... He got a ticket for being a bad commentator. By the way, what I mean, what I saw, I saw it on Twitter. Tom Phillips is a SmackDown uh, ring announcer. Also, he's a commentator for SmackDown. Now I'm thinking, okay, good. Otunga, get the fuck out. Tyler Phillips, come in. Now, Tom Phillips come through, and that's it. So we have. Four commentators on SmackDown now. I would not be surprised if Monday Night Raw does the same shit where they have four commentators also. I mean, I, I don't I don't get it. Like, just get rid of Byron Saxton and get rid of David Otunga. JBL can stay because there are times where I can I can handle JBL. And plus you know, King Ross on uh, from War Culture with his John O'Clocks are fucking hilarious. So, you know, those are the main reasons why I want JBL to stay. But besides all that, I don't really give a fuck about JBL. David Otunga, I, I honestly, what can I say that's positive about Otunga? And, and yes, yes, I know he's doing his job. He's doing the best he can. But I have the right to say, I don't, I'm not feeling it. I don't care. I'm not feeling it, okay? Same thing, with, same thing with Byron Saxon. You know, I liked him in NXT. You know, I gave him I gave him so many chances. But when he came to Raw, I don't care that it was his first night. That Monday Night Raw, when Brock Lesnar went ape shit and attacked Michael Cole and and beat a, and, and um, JBL and Booker T at that time. Byron Saxon and Jerry Lawler were the commentator was the commentary team later on in the night. I don't give a flying fuck. Okay, I don't care. Ever since then, I never liked Byron Saxton. Ever since then. And then when I found out that Byron Saxton was on pay-per-view with Cole and, and, and Lawler, Cole and JBL, I should say, at the time, started back at the Royal Rumble. So he's been on pay-per-views for how, how, how many months now? For, for about... Ten months now. For ten months, he's been on pay-per-view, calling, calling matches, and he's been dreadful for all of them. Just saying. So, yeah. Uh, so four commentary teams. I don't understand that. Why is that happening? But, eh, eh, I guess. Eh. So we go backstage. Baron Corbin caught up with St uh, with Shane. Shane was like, "Look, bro, I I'm not sure if you heard me, but uh, you will be." You know, teaming up with Ambrose and Ellsworth later on tonight in the main event. You know, I'm just wanting to let you know. Barry Corbin's like, I ain't doing your shit. I ain't doing your, I ain't doing this. I'm not interested in this match, all right? And then Shane McMahon's like, that was the request. You're fucking doing it. I don't give a damn what you say, right? And then Barry Corbin's like, I'll do your shit at Survivor Series because, you know, Big Bunny on pay-per-view. But tonight on a taped show in Glasgow? No. Not interested. So Shane was like, Shane was like, all right, fine then. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna be. I'm gonna take you out of that six man tag team match. You're gonna face the return superstar in Kalisto. Now I'm thinking, wait, Kalisto was injured. I I thought, 
they had nothing for him completely, so they just kept him off TV. Nope, he was actually injured for two and a half months. So, I'm like, okay, Kalisto's coming back, finally. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm like, where is this guy? Where has this guy been on my TV, you know? And then, later on the night, they announced that Kalisto will be facing Brian Kendrick for the Cruiserweight title. And if Kalisto wins, Kalisto is the, is the sole reason that the Cruiserweights and the title is on SmackDown Live and not Monday Night Crap, a.k.a. Monday Night Raw, a.k.a. Monday Night Who Gives a Fuck, right? So, that is some... Huge shit. So now I'm thinking, okay, that is awesome. But at the same time, I'm thinking, what if Raw gets both? Or what if SmackDown gets both? Or what if one of what if SmackDown loses the IC title, but gains the Cruiserweights? But what if it's? The, I mean, if it's the other way around, then that's fine. You know, the Cruiserweights stay on Raw. I guess, even though I would love to be on SmackDown. I don't care. You know, and people are saying, oh, they, they won't have that much time. It's two hours. Look at them on Monday Night Raw. They have three hours, and they still can't do it right. Just saying. So, with a two-hour show on, Monday, on SmackDown Tuesday nights, it will do them justice. It will do them well. But we'll see. But, um, yeah, if it's uh, if Raw gets the Cruiserweights and SmackDown keeps the IC title, fine. Everything stays the same. But if... if one show gets two, or then I don't, I don't, if SmackDown gets both, I'm fine, that's good. If Raw gets both, that is bad for SmackDown, because SmackDown, you know, got shafted on the draft, and, you know, they still have less people on their brand compared to Raw, even though the Survivor Series team on all of them, I love SmackDown's team more than Raw, that's why I think Raw is going to win, because they're making us think that SmackDown has the better team, where SmackDown's a shoo-in to win, even though in reality, Raw is going to fucking win, so, you might, be, you might call me retard, you might call me crazy, but that's a fact, I don't care what anyone says, um... So, yeah, and Baron Corbin had his match. The match didn't even happen. Baron Corbin's in the ring, and Kalisto's coming through. Once he jumped over the top, Baron Corbin caught him with a clothesline, attacked him. They brought it after that. Corbin legit slipped. I didn't know if, I don't know if it's real or not. It looked like, I, I looked at it closely. I don't, I still can't dictate it if it's real, uh, a real slip or a fake ass slip, but Baron Corbin got his knee fucked up, and he's out of Survivor Series. And I'm like, damn it. And then after that, well, I don't know. Well, we're going to get to that later on. Uh, so Daniel Bryan and Shane were like, okay, Baron Corbin cannot be in the Survivor Series match. So they scratched him out on that board. So he's no longer in. Later on, we had Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss for the women's title. I heard Todd Phillips say that it was the main event, yet it was, it was the, it was the, the, the last match of the first hour. So, I, I don't get it. But, I don't know. Um, Becky Lynch and they had their match. The match was great. I actually called the match. Well, I'm just sitting here calling the action. Because the, the SmackDown commentary team. I, I didn't pay attention if they were calling the match or not. So, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and do my shit. I miss commentating for Universe Mode so fucking bad. That I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it right now. So, they had their match. And then... Uh, Alexa Bliss, uh, had her foot on the rope, referee was not in position, she had her foot on the rope, and she still tapped out, because Becky Lynch put so, did so much damage, just extending the left arm of Alexa Bliss to a point where she almost fucking, uh, Ronda Rousey her ass, and fucking extended so hard that the, the uh, like, the inside of the elbow would be popping out to the, to the outside, you know, so... Had no choice. Had no choice but the tap, and ref that she had her foot on the ropes. But Shane McMahon said later on that the referee's final is is like his decision is final. So like I see it coming already. TLC uh, pay per view on December fourth. Bliss versus Lynch for the women's title again. I see it coming. Don't even ask me why. Just be just because she had her foot on the ropes and she tapped out regardless. That that's a main reason why that's gonna happen. Sorry, yeah, like I said, it was announced that Kendrick would be facing Kalisto. 
Kerr Hawkins defeated Apollo Crews, which was a little bit shocking. You know, I'm like, Kerr Hawkins got his super kick. Sorry, he got his head kicked off by Dolph Ziggler last week. And he he, uh, he won his match via roll-up. So, yeah. Then the main event comes through. Bray Wyatt, Harper, and Orton against Ambrose, Kane, and Ellsworth. Ellsworth had the biggest pop of the night where... He was legit just teasing us. Like he's gonna tag himself in. He tags himself in. I'm like, oh, so here we go. Let's see what else. Let's see what else is gonna do. He sets up for that no chin music. He's gonna go for it and block Sister Abigail one two three. I'm like, ah, this guy had his moments though. Like if he hit that kick, that Glasgow crowd would went crazy. So Shane McMahon came through after uh, AJ Styles and the Wyatt family was cornering a- uh, Dean Ambrose. Kane was nowhere to be found, right? So, so like uh, Shane McMahon legit ripped it to the ring, and he's like, "Yo, calm the fuck down." Derek Brand comes out, he's like, "All right, the person that will be replacing Baron Corbin at Survivor Series is our commissioner." Shane McMahon, I'm thinking, no fucking way. This is Shane McMahon. If if this happens, this is Shane McMahon's first match at Survivor Series since losing to Kane in an ambulance match, legit, I think, 13 years ago. So, goddamn. (laughs) Okay, goddamn. All right. 13 years ago. Kane defeated Shane McMahon at Survivor Series, which was Shane McMahon's last Survivor Series pay-per-view. So, damn. And also, this, this is this is Shane McMahon's first uh, uh, Survivor Series tag team match since the one in 2001 with the Evasion versus the WWE at the time. So, damn. So that's it, SmackDown. SmackDown felt solid to me, and I, I enjoyed myself. You know, I'm trying to watch the election at the same time, but I can't find the right fucking channel. But regardless, I was, I was getting hyped for SmackDown, and SmackDown did good tonight. So what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below, and uh, I'll put a link in the description for the Raw review if you have not checked it out. And leave a like, subscribe, and I am out later. We some southern boys with the promise strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain.